Okay, so this is a short screencast that's going to take us from SketchUp to the 3D printer, in particular the Prusa 3D Slicer. So right now I'm on SketchUp.com, and I'm just going to go from Products to SketchUp Free to Start Modeling. And this is going to bring up inside of the Chrome browser um, a 3D workspace for us. So I'm going to go to Create New using feet and inches. Um, don't need my little entourage person here, so we're just going to go ahead and delete her. Um, again, just as a quick reminder, because this is a very beginner level SketchUp tutorial, um, the wheel on my mouse, if I hold that down, it's going to give me orbit. The wheel is also going to give me a zoom in and zoom out, or I can shift and hold the wheel to pan. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, we're doing um, some models of buildings, um, downtown Springfield, Missouri on Commercial Street. So we want to set that up as a location. So I'm going to the stack right over the, at the top left, and I'm going to go to Add Location. And um, I've already navigated to my basic location. That's our project site. And I'm going to use Select Region to lock in on just about two blocks worth of space right here that I can begin modeling with. And I'm going to click Import. That is going to bring that in as a piece of geometry that has that map mapped onto it. And if we notice, that is going to be at a one-to-one -one scale. So if I come in and measure the edge of this project right here, that is 103 feet, 5 and 1 eighths of an inch. Um, so all of these things are, you know, that's reasonably accurate is what I would call that. So let's go ahead and model this building right here, which is 315 West Commercial. So you can see I've done this a few times as a demo already here um, as a download. So we're going to do that exact same building. Uh, I'm going to use the line tool and the map here to trace out the perimeter. Um, I want to make sure that what I'm drawing is staying on that XY axis. So in particular, as you're drawing, watch for the blue axis. That means that my line is actually moving vertically on the Z axis. So make sure that you're staying on the ground plane or on the XY axis. So just go ahead and close that in. Um, and in this particular case, none of these buildings around this area are square. They're all sort of these odd square-ish shapes. So I've got that traced out as a perimeter, I need to grab the height of my building next, which we can find in Google Earth. So I'm just going to hover over the sidewalk, or let's hover over the edge of the building first. And I'm seeing um, right down here on the bottom right, a height of 1382 for the building that's above sea level, and 1339 as the sidewalk level. So if I just run my calculator really quickly here, I can go that was 1380, 1382, 1339. I'm not good with the math in my head, so I'm going to use the calculator. 1382 minus 1339 gives me a height of 43 feet. So inside of SketchUp, I'm going to use the push-pull tool. I'm going to select that face and start moving it up. And then I'm going to type in the number 43 feet. And you can see that that's being added in the bottom right corner. And that will take my building up to 43 feet. The next thing that I like to do for these projects, because all of these are um, a traditional flat roof building with a parapet, is I'm going to do an offset on this top edge. So I'm going to bring that in two feet. And then I'm going to use push-pull again to drop that, just to add that parapet in. So this is a 1 to 50 model. So you can see there's a lot of additional things that I could start adding in to this building in terms of the crown molding, the windows, all of that kind of detail. But for this particular project at a 1 to 50 scale, what I have really is definitely enough in terms of the detail for a larger context model. So from there, inside of SketchUp, I need to send this box to my 3D printer. 
So first, I do not want this ground map to go, so I'm going to right click on it, unlock it, and delete it. Then I am going to take this object. We need to save it first, so I'm going to do a save as. So I'm going to save this right into my Commercial Street folder, 315 West Commercial Street. So I typically like to name all of my buildings as their street address. That way it keeps things neat. If I've got 100 buildings and they're all labeled with a street address, they're really easy to find, open up, and work through. So let's overwrite that file. Then I'm going to download this to open up into my Prusa slicing software. Um, I'm going to export this as an STL file. So in the Prusa slicer, let's go ahead and erase or delete that, that I have. So again, I can use the wheel to move in and out. If I hold the wheel, I can pan or I can right mouse click and hold to orbit. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is import my STL file. So it's this latest one, 315 West Commercial Street, in this case, 4. So it is importing this at a one-to-one. -one. Um, so I believe that SketchUp is actually exporting um, in a file with a base unit of inches. Um, Prusa slicer is going to work in millimeters, so things are going to go sideways really fast for us. So the first thing I know is this is a one-to-one -one scale model of the print bed for the Prusa slicer. So it's going to automatically scale down so that the object fits on the print bed. But I want this to print not at a scale factor of 8.22%. Um, I want this to print at a scale that is 1 to 50 so um, we have a scale calculator here um, where, you know, if I wanted an eighth inch model, I could type in one inch equals eight feet, and that would give me all of my appropriate scale factors. But in this particular case, we want one inch equals 50 feet. So I have my base scale factor. And then if I'm coming from uh, Revit or Formit, which uses a foot as a base, or if I'm coming from might be the other way around. It might be that Revit and Formit use inches as a base, um, whereas SketchUp and 3ds Max are using feet as a base. I have to go back and look at that again. But either way, um, I know that my scale factor for a 1 to 50 model is going to be 4.23%. I think it's actually inches, because I believe that there are 25.4 millimeters in one inch. So that exported file out of SketchUp is thinking inches. Those inches are being converted to millimeters. Um, so in other words, if 10 inches in SketchUp is going to be 10 millimeters in Prusa. And so I have to convert using that 25.4 number for millimeters in an inch. So that gives me essentially 4.23% as a scale factor. I also know um, I can go in and check an overall dimension using the scale factor as well and see if my millimeters are correct. So if I measure the outside edge of that building, 315 West Commercial Street, I know that it is 95 feet. I measured that in SketchUp. Um, I know at a 1 to 50 scale, I should be in that 48 millimeter range for my final object if I'm doing everything correctly in terms of applying my scale factor inside of the Prusa slicer. So let's add that 4.23% right here to this. So that's done right here, scale factors, four, not two, four, heavens, fingers, 4.23%. So that is shrunk down. I know my X direction be right at that 48 millimeter mark it is 48.28 millimeters. So that is ready to be sliced now. So we're going to use 0.2 millimeter speed on the MK3, generic PLA, no supports, 20% infill, and that is ready to be sliced. Um, so it's actually already gone through all the slicing. Um, I can double check my layers, make sure everything is looking good um, all the way up through the parapet at the top. Once I have this, I can export my G code. Um, again, keeping that name in there, 315 West Commercial Street. 
and then the basic print settings. I can save that file, and that G-code file now is what's ready to send directly to the 3D printer. Easy peasy.